Hello darlings, I'm Matt. And I'm Megan. And welcome to College Uncomplicated's Financial Aid Boot Camp. In this episode, we'll be going over the strings that are attached to your financial aid package, what happens if you don't meet those requirements, and what happens if your financial aid package is just too small. The biggest thing to remember about financial aid is that, like Megan said, there are strings attached to specific types of aid. For most types of state and federal aid, you need to be enrolled at least half time, which in college terms means you need to be taking six hours or about two classes. Secondly, you have to meet Satisfactory Academic Progress, or SAP, requirements. Usually these requirements differ between schools, but generally you need a 2.0 GPA and a 65% class completion rate. To give you an idea about this, say you take two classes, which means you're attending half time, you get an A in one and an F in the other. Even though when those average out, you have a 2.0 GPA, you're meeting that part of SAP requirements, you only have a 50% class completion rate. So if you don't meet these academic requirements, your school can take away your financial aid for the next year. And university specific and outside scholarships are completely different, so they have different requirements in order to qualify for those sources of aid. What if this happens, or if you get less aid than you need for a given school year? You can write a financial aid appeal. Why this might sound scary, it's actually easier than it sounds. A financial aid appeal is basically where you write a letter to the university asking for more money that wasn't originally allocated to you, or asking for your aid to be reinstated if it was taken away for academic reasons. The process varies from school to school School, but we can give you a general overview of what it's like. First thing you want to do is make sure you research your school's actual appeal process. That means figuring out who to send it to, where to send it to, and if there's any university specific forms that you need to include. Second, you need to write an appeal letter. If you've never had to write one before, just click Megan's face and there's going to be an example one for you guys to fill out. So, when writing an appeal, remember to be honest and to be able to provide documentation that backs up your claims for why you need additional aid. If you didn't receive enough financial aid the first time around, you're gonna have to prove some form of financial change in status since you filled up FAFSA. Some examples of this include your parent retiring or being laid off, a death in the family, or some severe medical condition somewhere in the family that has caused extreme medical bills. One situation that is not a basis for a financial aid appeal is lack of parental support. So if your parents aren't going to be helping you pay for college, unfortunately schools do not have to take that into account when awarding financial aid. If you lost your financial aid due to low grades, you will need to provide reasons for your poor performance. Some examples include a traumatic event, depression, a death in the family, and usually all of these examples need some sort of documentation to prove that they actually occurred. Now when writing your financial aid appeal, remember being proactive is the best way for the appeal to go through successfully. So so if you're lacking financial aid, include your parents' financial situation, as well as other forms of aid that you weren't awarded but that you do qualify for. If it comes to academic progress, show ways in which you have already attempted to improve your academic standing at your university, such as better study habits, less partying, and visiting your school's tutoring or writing center. If that doesn't work, you will likely have to work on improving your grades without funding. And if you can't afford that at your regular university, you might have to go to community college, but it is possible that they they also won't provide funding as well. In the case that you can't afford tuition at either a four-year university or the community college that you transfer back to, unfortunately it's kind of a tough shit situation. Private loans are available for students who don't meet SAP requirements, but the terms typically aren't favorable to the student and as a result they should be a last resort. So moral of the story is, don't let your grades fall below a 2.0 and always meet the 65% completion rate. If after falling below SAP requirements, you work for a semester and get your grades back up above that 2.0 and 65% completion rate depending on your university, it is possible to qualify for aid for the following semester. In this case, you will need to write a financial aid appeal to your university proving that you meet SAP requirements and should qualify for federal and state aid. The reason you have to do this is because the university will not reassess your financial aid package at the semester mark. They only do it at the year. Therefore, the only way to get them to reassess your financial aid at the semester mark is through an appeal letter. So we know this is a lot of information, but luckily the process is almost over. Once you've written the appeal letter, you just send it to the financial aid office. Most of the time you do send it to financial aid offices, but it is possible that it varies by university. So be sure to do your research on where to send the letter. The response time from each of the offices varies by school to school and by the specific time of year you're appealing it. 
As you approach the beginning of each semester, the financial aid office is extremely busy. So writing the appeal letter earlier will mean a faster turnaround for your appeal process. General rule of thumb is that it should take anywhere from three to four weeks. Don't hold me to that though, because each university is different. And realize that an appeal letter won't guarantee you more funds or the reinstatement of your funds, but the, really the worst thing that they can do is say no. So you should write an appeal letter if you can. This is a tricky situation. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to call your university's financial aid office. They're more than willing to answer questions about their specific process. So that's all we have for this week. Make sure to like this video if you liked it, and also subscribe to College Uncomplicated for more financial aid bootcamp. Also, be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Pinterest at College Uncomp. And as always, if you have any questions at all, make sure to leave them in the comments below. And as always, I'm Matt. And I'm Megan. And this has been Financial Aid Bootcamp. Bye, y'all. Bye. Peace, 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 peace. Okay, that was mine. <laughs>